Hello Internet, and welcome to a hopefully first video in a series of how the heck I do things. So for those that don't know me, hi, um, I have a medical condition called fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. Um, the really short version of this is that it basically turns muscles and tendons into bone thus fusing me into a human statue. Um, at this point I have, I can move my jaw, I can move 80% um, of my finger joints, I have a little bit of movement in this wrist, and that's about it. So everything else, um, any other bendy part you can think of, either joints or spines or ribs or neck or whatever, um, I can't actually bend. This, as you can imagine, is super fun. It also makes some things rather hard, especially since my hands, this hand, I have this much flop to it, and I can use the fingers. This hand has a little bit more flop, and I can rotate it 90 degrees. I cannot go palm up. Um, and I can't really move my arms. Now, if I bend things that aren't really supposed to bend, I can sort of get my fingers this close. I can't touch them. And this is hard and extremely uncomfortable and kind of stressful. So for the most part, my hands are a foot apart. Now, I do knitting and I do crochet, and you might ask yourself, well, how exactly do you do that? Because most videos, or most people that do knit and crochet, kind of have their hands together, and also can move their hands. So the first trick is this. This is a Tunisian crochet hook, also known as an Afghan crochet hook. Um, it is 14 inches long. It's designed, as the name suggests, for Tunisian or Afghan crochet, um, where you build up a row of stitches on the needle so it needs, well, hook, so it needs to be longer than a standard crochet hook. Um, standard crochet hooks go from here to about yay here which would not work for me. These work. They are absolutely wonderful. Um, this is bamboo. It is a size I hook, which is 5.5 millimeters, which is good for worsted weight yarn, which I happen to have some of. So I figured I would demonstrate how exactly I crochet. So I have a slip knot here, which I made and is now on the hook. So I tension the yarn by sliding it just between these two fingers like this. I don't wrap around anything. I find that tends to jam up. Um, if I squeeze my fingers together, I can't pull the yarn through. Um, if I don't squeeze them together, of course, it slides freely. Um, th so the amount of squeezing determines how much resistance there is to the yarn. I find this is all that's necessary to tension the yarn. Um, I hold the hook, as you can see, down by the end um, in a knife hold. Um, this would be a pencil hold, but I would need my other hand to be down here. And that doesn't work. So, knife hold, my fingers kind of curl around the end. Um, the beginning of projects is always the worst because all you have to hold on to is a tiny little tail. Um, but when I'm working, I hold, I, I pinch the whatever fabric there is, or the chain, or the tail, um, between the thumb and the first finger, the first finger joint right here. Um, I can hold it like this, but then my finger gets in the way of the hook, 
Um, I cannot hold it as many people do with these two fingers, with well, thumb and this finger, because they do not connect. Um, I could theoretically, so, so the kind of more standard way to hold things is to have the yarn going over the first finger and hold with the second finger. Um, that is kind of awkward, which just goes to show you that whatever works, works. So I'm just doing a um, little demonstration piece here. Um, so, now the fun part about not being able to bring my hands together is that working into the chain, I kind of have to fiddle with the hook quite a bit to get it to open up because I can't bring my right hand in to pull up the hook, uh, to make a space. And if I use my left hand, then I'm letting go of the rest of it and it just kind of spins around and doesn't do what I want it to. But it does mean that the slowest part is always, always the beginning. Partly because there's less to hold on to. Partly because it's just annoying working into a chain. And partly because I can't bring my hands together. Um, I considered doing this video starting with an established project so that it would show better, but then I decided why not show you the full process? Because, hey, anytime I start a crochet project, I have to actually, I know this is shocking, start a crochet project. Um, My current real projects right now, I'm working on a dragon tail shawlette for myself, and then a sweater for my baby niece, who is probably, let's see, Sixteen months at this point. Um, I am making the twenty-four month size because I crochet super slowly. Um, and you'll notice, well, you might notice that I do a fair amount of like readjusting, re get, getting my grip, letting this fall and re-grabbing it, letting the yarn fall and re-grab it. That is just kind of a necessary step because otherwise it doesn't work. So now I'm doing double crochet. And this does, by the way, make it super awkward to do a one of the chainless start of the row double crochet things because they generally have you hold something in place with your right hand on the hook. You will notice that I am not holding anything with my right hand except for the hook because I just can't get it. So I am going to move closer to the camera so that you can get a better, closer view of what exactly I do. This, by the way, is another trick of mine. It is a bamboo back scratcher that is very good for, like, actually grabbing things that I cannot reach. Okay. And then I just kind of tuck it away into my seat belt so I don't have to hold on to it. And voila, it's gone. Um... So I am doing a double crochet row now. Um, the disadvantage of this yarn is that it is a dark yarn, 
and therefore hard to see the loops. Also, the lighting is not the best at the moment. But basically, yeah, so I do all of the fabric manipulation and yarn manipulation with my left hand. And then my right hand, it's partly a wrist twist, but mostly just it's a little bit of this movement and also just spinning with my fingers. Um, and last stitch is always so much fun to get the hang of. Okay. So So to show you what the um, hook was actually designed for, I will do a brief row or two of Tunisian crochet, which is actually kind of like, sometimes I describe it as a hybrid of knitting and crochet. Sometimes I describe it as kind of assembly line crochet, where crochet, you pick up a loop and then work it off, pick up a loop and work it off. Tunisian crochet, crochet you pick up all the loops of the row so that you have something like this. Um, and then you work them all off. Now obviously this is a small piece, so there weren't very many loops on the hook when I um, filled it up. But if you're doing an afghan, you have 200 stitches on your hook. Um, which is where normal people find that a long hook can come in handy. Um, clearly, this does mean that I can do Tunisian crochet just as well as I do regular crochet. But if you can imagine, this is seven loops. I've already worked one off, but so they can scrunch together. But you can imagine, you know, this whole hook being filled up with stitches. Um, so that is why people make long hook and I am very grateful for that because without it I would not be able to do even regular crochet. Um, so I'm going to go back to doing double crochet. This is a very weird sample piece. Um, I also think I dropped a stitch and I went from double crochet to Tunisian crochet. But you can, if I tilt it a little so that you can see. And yeah, anytime I need to do a yarn over, I generally let go of the fabric um, just to let it swing out of the way. I'm having trouble seeing where I'm supposed to put the hook next. Um, I don't usually transition between Tunisian crochet and double crochet. I was just goofing off and having fun. So anyway, um, and then if I want to like spread out, especially a longer piece, like say the sweater I'm doing, I can kind of jiggle it down so that my right hand can reach it and then I can spread it out a bit. 
And of course, with a longer piece, I can hold it in my left hand too. This piece is not quite long enough, but um, I cannot, however, hold up what I'm working on. It's just always just right here. Um, so if I want to, you know, spread out a shawl that I'm working on, I have to have someone to help me. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or otherwise let me know. And in the meantime, I will see you on the next video where hopefully I will show you the really kludgy method in which I knit. Um, that is rather more awkward, and so I tend to do more crocheting than I do knitting right now. I can still knit, or at least I can still knit flat. It's kind of hard to knit in the round for reasons which I will demonstrate in the next video, which gives something to look forward to. So bye internet!